Nolan Shanuel will lead things off here for the big train in the bottom of the second. Some more work to do offensively. And speaking of some offense, we're joined up here in the Dandy Walker Alliance broadcast booth by Trevor Doyle out of Sacramento State. Trevor, thanks for coming up here with us as Shanuel takes a called strike in there from Cooper Vest to start things off. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I know you've been anxious to get up here for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. And that one softly with the breaking ball off the small of Sean Uell's back in after two pitches. He stands on first base there with the hit by pitch. Least favorite spot you've ever been hit by a pitch. Just uh, to start things off here. I'm going to go with last night right in the shoulder blade. Yeah, that one looked like it hurt. Got me good. Uh, arm went numb for a couple innings, but all good now. There's been some interesting hit by pitches this year. I think we've seen Torres – where your college teammate up there at Sacramento State wear a couple off the dome. I think you did you take one off the helmet too at one point? I did against the yeah. Grays, yeah, at their place. Yeah, that one was loud too. Torres the other night was really loud. That one was scary. Yeah, it's definitely scary. Rocco, meanwhile, has worn fourteen. We keep talking about it. he's dangerously approaching the record as this one hit left side, pop up for the third baseman Smith. He collects it. And there's one gone there. No chance for Sean Uell. To advance as Martin, the shortstop, pops out there, bringing up your counterpart or replacement technically out in right field, Brady Gump. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good player. He's going to be really good. You guys have really cemented both kind of corner outfielders. We've seen, you know, Foster and Thomas as well. What's that kind of relationship been like as you guys kind of move in and out of those different spots and kind of work together to put the best defense out there possible? Yeah, it's been awesome. It's just kind of like we got a group going, and uh, when one guy needs a rest, it's not like someone else is going in who's not going to get the job done. We know all four or five of us are going to get that job done. It's a cool little platoon yeah. being built there. See that, you know, kind of more prominently in the majors. This one hits sharply towards the screen. Heads up there in the D.C. dugout. 0-2 oh, now on Brady out of Notre Dame. He had a couple big knocks against this team. You go back to that big home run off of Donovan Frayer down the left field line. Sneaky pop, I think, for him. Yeah, what's absolutely. Your, what's, your, what's your scouting report on Brady at the plate? Uh, the kid can swing it, plain and simple. That's, that's what I'm going to say. I'm a big fan of him. And for yourself, how would you uh, describe yourself to an opposing coach who's looking to get the read on you? Um, I would say, uh, um, I don't know. That's a tough question. Um, I just try to do my job. It's, I'm never trying to do too much. I'm never trying to this technically. This one in there for called strike three. Good off-speed pitch there from Cooper Vest. Sends Gup down on strikes. And there's two gone here for Colin Tuft. Newest arrival to the big train. What's it been like? Getting to know Colin through a couple games now. Yeah, so I think this is only his third game with us, but uh, what he's done on the field has really impressed me. He had those two walks in the Israel game, which were very impressive. A little patient eye for such a young guy. I want to get, talk about the Israel game because I know someone who you said has been a huge influence in your life. One of your most influential coaches back at Cimarron High School is Tough sends this one up towards the right side, well out of play and foul over the D.C. Gray's bullpen out in right field. Mark Kligman, son of Ali, just drafted in the 10th round by the Nationals. I'm sure that was a very cool experience for all of you guys out there. Yeah, it definitely was, definitely for the high school. Uh, just seeing his name get called was something special, and uh, it meant a lot to me, and it meant probably even more to him. Yeah, and so I've heard from some well-embedded moles that you two have a really great relationship. Uh, you know, what was that like building that in high school and – Obviously trying to continue that on through your experiences at Sacramento State as I want to call it strike two, I believe, on Tuft. Yeah, so my senior year he was a freshman, and I knew the kid had talent, and he was a really good kid, really good family. So I just tried to do my best to kind of show him the ropes. Absolutely. Communications major at Sacramento State with the Stingers. Of course, coming here with your teammate Keith Torres. You ever thought about – put one of these things on eventually, one of the headsets you got on there? Yeah, absolutely. I've definitely thought about it. Um, not totally sure what I want to do after baseball, but uh, 
I'm sure I'll figure it out. That's the beauty of a communications major, right? You can do anything with it. Absolutely anything. Except get a job. Here's the 0-2 <laughs> low away for ball one in on Tuft. Not sure what he's going to major in. Rising freshman in the fall to come at Virginia. National Hot Dog Hay. National Hot Dog Day, if I can say the word right. We celebrated the Big Train staff and interns have so far eaten 75. You can go to the at Big Train socials and commit to donating to the Mana Food Bank per each hot dog eaten. As tough works that I we were talking about a few moments ago to take ball two there. What is your preferred hot dog topping? What are you looking for on a dog? All right, so my big thing is I don't like ketchup. Okay, I respect that, especially yep. on a hot dog. So me, I'm more of just a, a mustard guy, maybe a, a sprinkle of cheese on there, but not more than that. I like to keep it simple. Time called by Avila behind the dish. I think they want a correction on the count. Two and two with two outs here on Tuft. We get a play ball to Vest out there on the mound. I like that. A little cheese. I feel like it gets kind of underrated. Tuft grounds this one towards Buford at short. He'll fire over to get the lead runner at second. And the side is retired. Trevor, feel free to stick around a little bit longer. I think we'll have somebody different in the inning to come. You'll just have to stick around and see what happens. Big train go down quietly in the bottom of the second 4-1 DC. We'll take a quick word here for our friends at the Dandy Walker Alliance. Back here on Big Train TV, and it's Tyler Gallo in the booth right now, and I'm joined once again by Trevor Doyle. Trevor, thanks again for joining us here for this full inning, and we'll get to some more questions in a second. But uh, first start off, I mean, named an all-star this year for CRCBL. I don't know if Ben alluded to it a little bit, but I mean, what was that experience like, and how great was that honor to receive? It, it was insane. Kind of the whole experience, just kind of playing here, seeing all the fans here was awesome. And then going to Aberdeen and playing in that stadium was awesome getting to interact with all little fans it was really fun yeah and you know Aberdeen I mean that complex is really awesome you know I've driven by it so many times in my life um his first pitch here to from Jack Borelli is lifted to deep right field back goes Gump onto the warning track at the wall that ball is gone goodbye wow what a blast off the bat of Cam Buford and near to where you play <laughs> right field as that goes just over the Bethesda Big Train National Champion banner and Cam Buford S greets Jack Braley rudely on the mound. It's a 5-1 ball game. So I got to know, you know, going back on a ball like that, um, how confident are you in yourself to make the play if it's going deep like that, if it's staying in the ballpark? Uh, personally, I just I, – I think I can catch any ball out there. I have a good feel for the warning track here, playing all the games we have. And so I kind of know when that warning track's going to creep up on me or not. And uh, I just got the confidence that I know I'm going to catch whatever is hit to me. So that ball not catchable is the first pitch to Evan Smith lifted down the left field line. Foster hoping for a play. That's into the corner and foul. So, you know, on this team with another Sacramento State player and Keith, you know, I mean, how great is it to enjoy this experience with Keith the Fly in Hawaiian? Yeah, it's good. We're good buddies back, back home in SAC. And uh, we found out we were both coming here. We were both pretty excited. Yeah, it's good to, good to have. I mean, playing under, you know, Coach Sal has got to be something interesting, too. I mean, what has it been like under your experience, though, with him? Yeah, so I played in this league three years ago for another team, and playing against Sal, I was just like, that's a guy I want to play for. <laughs> creates a winning environment, uh, a good culture, and it's just wanted something I wanted to be a part, a part of. And uh, since being here, it's been just that, exactly what I expected. So, I mean, I probably know the answer to this question, but today we have a split seven-inning doubleheader. Do you prefer the nine-inning doubleheader or seven-inning? I think I already know the, the answer, but, you know. Uh, summer ball, I prefer the two sevens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty pretty <laughs> heating, heating up here, you know. It's been hot. I mean, especially up in this booth all year. It's pitch to Smith up high, one and two. So, I mean, you know, what has been it like, you know, getting to know the guys, meeting some new people, coming here and playing some baseball well, as well in front of the fans? I mean, first, first off, I want to know your first impressions of Povich when you first got here. And then, of course, you know, building the relationships that you guys have gone along this summer. Yeah, so the field's awesome. I think it's by far the best field that we play at. Smith lifts one into right field, hoping for it is Gump. He'll come under it and make the catch for out number one and then yeah I mean building the relationships with the with teammates you know guys in the outfield stuff like that are just all over the place well who else who else have you built like the best relationship with I guess yeah so to me this is that's the best part about summer ball it's meeting all these guys from 
all over, all across the nation, and you stay in contact with them, and it's really cool. Um, I've gotten really close with the William and Mary's boys, uh, the Notre Dame boys, kind of everyone. Yeah, yeah. So when a you know, I got to know again another defensive effort when uh, you like like Jack Cohn a couple innings ago, the uh, ball kind of took a weird carom off the wall. Are you? When you're hustling to get that ball, is your mind that I'm going to throw this guy out? I'm going to get this guy out on the base path if he tries to take an extra base? Yeah, so that's always your thought is kind of just get the ball quick and uh, get it in as quick as possible, get it to the cutoff guy, and then kind of let them do their thing. Yeah, so what has been your, I mean, I guess most favorite moment thus far that you've had this season at uh, not only just playing with this team, just overall? I mean, all-star game's got to be big. Was there any other one that stands out to you? i got to think about that one. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's kind of just, it's every day, like just coming to the field, hanging out with the guys and we have a really talented squad and just seeing what everyone else can do and just being a part of that is just an awesome experience. Yeah. And, uh, what are you most looking forward to as you guys heading towards the postseason? you know, wrapped up that number one seed, you know, what are you most looking forward to as you guys head to the playoffs? Yeah. Hopefully just winning the whole thing. That's, that's why we all came here. We came here to win and, uh, we're excited for playoffs to start and next week, and uh, I think we've all we've all been preparing pretty well for it. Yeah. So the, the two and two from Braley, just a bit inside, nearly hit him, but dancing out of the way of that one is Robbie Wacker, the designated hitter. So DC has been one of my favorite places to go to, and they're here tonight. What has been your favorite field other than Povich this season? Besides, you know, the ones that you've gone to. I mean, uh, every other day, I guess. Um, the All Star Game, Aberdeen, of course, <laughs> uh, would be number one, but uh. From the fields we play at every day, I'd probably agree with you, D.C. Just the whole stadium, the nice turf. It's the Nationals kind of youth center, so it's really cool to play there. Yeah, it's, it's really, I mean, yeah, we're up on the picnic, I guess, porch area when we're broadcasting up there, but it's still a great vantage point. It's right there. Robbie Wacker flies out to center. So, you know, as the season goes along, I mean, what, I mean, you told us, I mean, before, you know, when we first met you, I mean, your main goal for the season. What are you looking forward to for the, I mean, I guess, what are you working on for the rest of the season as it starts to wrap up a little bit. Yeah, still just kind of continuing to make contact with the ball, put it in play, and then just continuing my skills in the outfield and uh, winning some ball games. Yeah. So did you ever pitch when you were younger? Did you ever try out pitching? Because, uh, you know, we see Jack Braley on the mound right now. But I heard he was potentially going to get in the game. We saw Everett get in as a pinch hitter down in Lorton. Were you ever a pitcher when you were younger? Yeah, so uh, – I pitched in high school, but before that, I never really pitched. Kind of growing up, I wasn't really a pitcher. And then my senior year, junior year, I started pitching. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I gave, I was, I played little league when I was younger. I mean, most kids do. And I tried pitching. And there was a guy, and so the guy in the first game, I don't know if you remember the guy that was on the mound, that his hat kept falling off. Mm -hmm. I know you recognize that. I tried that one time. My mom got so mad at me. <laughs> she was like, why is your hat so dirty? You know, I tried this. It says, broken bat, blooper into shallow left. That's going to fall in for a base hit past Sean Uell and in there. So, I mean, um, you got, you know, really close to the guys with William & Mary and the Notre Dame guys. Who's the biggest character on this team? You know, we've heard that Everett is the main answer for that. But is there anybody else that doesn't get as much respect in that scenario that you think people would be like, hey, he's, he's, pretty, he's pretty funny? Yeah, absolutely. So I don't really get to spend too much time with the pitchers. They're doing their thing in the bullpen. But I would say for the position players, uh, Kemp Alderman. <laughs> the guy is hilarious. It's Kemp Alderman. I mean, it just an absolute – Yeah, like I mean, we've noticed it from up here, you know, and it's always funny to see him come in on the mound. And we're like, oh, Kemp's on the mound. It's just great. But, you know, wa I mean, watching him in batting practice has got to be something – just to see, I mean, Danny Valencia even remarked on him when he was out there. But, I mean, from your standpoint, you know, what is it like to see him hit at the batting practice spot? Makes me jealous. <laughs> no, it's just, it's so impressive. The way he can put balls out to any part of the field with ease is just super impressive, and especially for how young he is. Yeah, so uh, in the first game today, you know, it was a pretty solid one. But when you guys are uh, – I got to know just what's going through your heads, especially in a night where the team itself is offensively struggling. Are you just – maybe pressing a little bit, trying to get that hit to break up the, the struggle or maybe just you know going out there and trying to just keep doing being yourself. Yeah, it's definitely more just trying to try just trying to be ourselves. In the dugout, there's never doubt with uh, anyone. We all know we can put up 10 runs in an inning. We've done it before. But uh, that's the beauty of baseball. 
really is. You know, and the big inning has been uh, something that has been taking form over the year. We've seen so many times, especially against some other teams. But uh, when you're a part of that big inning, I mean, how great does it feel to get, like, a crooked number, like seven or eight or nine on the scoreboard? Yeah, it's nice. We always uh, joke around kind of having – one guy might make two outs in one inning, and you just don't want to be that guy. Yeah, so fly out to center field. Jack Cohn waves over off. is under it, and that'll do it for this half inning. Once again, Trevor, thank you so much for joining us up today. We really appreciate you donating your time. Big Train coming up when we come back here on Big Train TV, but thanks again, Trevor. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of course.